Hey y'all, I got another budget-friendly Thanksgiving or even just soul food Sunday menu for you. I'm gonna show you how to do some fried turkey, some dirty rice, and some sweet potato cornbread with a bourbon glaze. And I even have a peach cobbler dessert. Now the potato salad, greens, and macaroni and cheese recipe, I will link in the description box because I've done that so many times. Guys, check out my ebook if you love soul food. And honey, let me tell you something. You guys are going to love this. This meal ran me about $57. Now, this will be good for a you know small crowd, maybe five, maybe six people, okay? Now, I am going to do some turkey wings, and I am going to use this injectables as the marinade. I'm going to put about three-fourths of an ounce to one ounce of the marinade inside of each turkey wing. Now, if you don't want to get the marinade and you want to save a little money, then I suggest you just brine the turkey wings in three tablespoons of salt and sugar and about a teaspoon of MSG. Okay, cover it up with some water and let it brine overnight. And that's, that's practically free. Okay, but I'm only using about half the marinade. That's why I poured in half the marinade into a cup so I wouldn't get the rest of it dirty. You know, we ain't trying to cross contaminate up in here. Okay. So I'm gonna go in and I am going to inject each part of the turkey wing and honey, this gonna, this gonna swell up like your auntie cankles, okay? You know, you got that auntie when she eat a little salt, you know, she be having a little pig feet and then her um, ankle swell up. Okay, that's what this should look like, okay? All right, y'all know the sisters, they be getting them injections, okay? You know, you know them BBLs and stuff, they be getting them injections, okay? That's how it's gonna swell up on you. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside in a bowl and I'm going to allow this to marinate overnight. Whatever marinade is left in the cup, I'm just going to throw that on top and I'm going to put this in the fridge. Now, if you don't have overnight, you can do one hour, you can do four hours. Okay, all of that is fine. You just need time for this to sit because this marinade has a lot of salt in it. Now, it's the next day and I'm just going to add some dry seasonings that I have. So I'm using a little bit of poultry magic a little bit of lemon pepper, also some salt-free Cajun seasoning. Just use whatever you have that has low sodium because that um, Tony's Creole butter has a good amount of salt. I also suggest getting the turkey wings that have the little tip on them because, baby, I'm about to nibble the mess out of that turkey tip, okay? Do you hear me? If you like to chomp on that turkey wing tip, baby, go ahead and give me a like, okay? I know you part of the family because we be throwing down up on that. I have a Dutch oven that I have filled up with oil and it's at about 350 degrees. I'm going to put in the tur about half of the turkey wings and while they're cooking, I'm gonna scrape off any dry spices that flow off of them because I don't want them to burn in the oil. This is also why I don't put tons of dry seasoning on there because sometimes it will come off. Don't move them too much. Just You just wanna make sure they're submerged and not sticking to the bottom. It will take you anywhere from 12 to 14 minutes for this to get brown. Okay, no matter how long it takes, if it ain't brown, it ain't ready. Okay, I'm going to take them out of the oil and I'm going to set them on a paper towel to drain. Tell me in the comments if you prefer roasted turkey or fried turkey. I feel like I am definitely a fried turkey girl because that skin gets nice and crispy and that turkey is really nice and juicy. But hey, you know what? I still eat roasted turkey. I ain't going to be picky. Now I'm going to go ahead and start working on this dirty rice. I really actually maybe say rice dressing because we're not going to use chicken gizzards today. I'm going to cook two strips of bacon and I'm going to take them out and leave the grease. I'm then going to go in with some lean beef. So this is about an 85-15, a 93-7 would work, but you don't want anything that's super greasy, okay? Because we're not actually going to drain the fat. We're going to use it to enhance the flavor of the rice. I'm going to cook it in this fat and when it's mostly cooked, it doesn't have to be all the way done. You're going to go in with that Trinity. We have our bell peppers, our celery, and our onion. Now, most of you will already have these vegetables at your house, so this won't cost you anything. Okay, we're going to saute this for about four to five minutes because I really want, you know, all those juices to come out of those veggies. I'm going to go in with some salt-free Cajun seasoning, some bouillon, and some Creole seasoning. Then I'm going to add in my herbs. I'm going to use a bay leaf as well as a sprig of thyme, which you guys know I'm a gardener, so that is free for me, okay? And I'm just going to mix that together as well as add in a few cloves of garlic. I'm then going to put in two cups of long grain rice and I'm going to mix everything together. I'm going to add my bacon back in because we ain't leaving that flavor behind, okay? That's one of the flavor enhancers here. 
And then I'm going to put in three and three fourths of a cup of water. I took out a fourth of a cup because typically I would use four cups, but I took out a little bit because there was a lot of juice that the beef produced. And also I find a lot of moisture comes off the vegetables. So I just take out a little bit. You want to taste the broth, make sure it's very seasoned. And then if you need to adjust the seasonings, do so now. I added on a habanero because I wanted some spice and I ended up putting some foil on it to trap in that steam. I let this simmer on low for 20 minutes undisturbed and then my rice was perfectly cooked, okay? I like to go in with chopsticks just to fluff up the rice so I don't break up the grains too much. And y'all, let me know if you're gonna try this dirty rice recipe. I feel like this tasted really good with the fried turkey. Absolutely amazing. Next thing we're working on is the sweet potato cornbread. And this is a special recipe, okay? Because this has a wonderful glaze. Now, some of y'all be hating on the fact that I use cornbread mix, but y'all would do everything else to make your life more convenient. You would go to McDonald's, you would eat hamburger helper. But for some reason, if I combine cornmeal and flour and baking powder and I let the store do it for me, you know, you got a problem with that, okay? Use the mix, baby, use the mix. It just makes your life easy. I'm going to add three cups of this buttermilk mix with a cup and a half of brown sugar, about a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of ginger, and a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Now this is a sweet cornbread, almost something you could even eat for dessert if you would like. Once I mix all of this together, I'm going to add in my wet ingredients. I am using some vanilla extract, some sour cream, and heavy cream but i've also done this with buttermilk and half and half so if the heavy cream is out of your budget then use one of those two things i'm using four tablespoons of butter three eggs and i'm going to mix this together i have already roasted some sweet potatoes i peeled the sweet potatoes and i mashed them and i made sure that i had about two cups You'll probably need about one large sweet potato in order to get this much. And then I'm going to fold it in. Now the batter gonna be thick, baby. It's gonna be thick with two C's, honey, but it should be smooth, all right? So you don't overwork it, but it will work itself out, okay? Then I've had my cast iron skillet. Y'all know Sister Mabel, she be making her entrance. She been in the oven heating up at 425 degrees with a little bit of vegetable oil. I'm going to go ahead and add my batter into the skillet and then you're going to hear that sizzle. Okay, that's how you know you're going to get a nice crust. Now, something about this cornbread is that it is super moist. So it's going to need to cook for about 30 minutes at 425 degrees. About 20 minutes in, you want to check it because it may be getting too dark at the top and you want to put some foil on. A toothpick will let you know if it's ready. Now, the one thing that's a little bougie on this cornbread is the glaze, okay? Because I'm going to use butter and a little bit of peach bourbon, but this is optional because I have made it without the glaze and it's still fantastic, okay? But if you, you know, you got a little extra, or sister, if you're trying to make this for your man, you know, you're trying to keep him coming back, okay? Put a little something on him. All right, you go ahead and make this glaze and you're going to see what I'm talking about. All right. Go ahead and put about four tablespoons of butter and a cup of peach bourbon in a skillet and just let this simmer for about 15 minutes. You're kind of making a little syrup here. It's going to add a nice richness to the sweet potatoes. It complements it very well. Don't let the fact that it has the peach flavor throw you off. It actually tastes kind of gives a little bit of a fruity element to your cornbread, but I promise you it is delicious. Okay. So I'm going to take this glaze and I'm just going to pour it on. I'm going to let it seep in for at least 10 minutes. All right, because you want it to just, it will just kind of go down deep all up into it. Okay, get into it, baby. If you do not want to do the glaze because of the bourbon, then you just melt about two tablespoons of butter and you wipe that on. And honey, ain't nobody going to complain. Mm. Now, I am going to do for you guys a peach cobbler. This is a biscuit lover's crust lover's peach cobbler. I have a 30 ounce can of peaches and heavy cream. I drained half the juice and then I have a 15 ounce can and I didn't drain any juice from that one. I went in with about four tablespoons of butter, and there I am with the bourbon again, y'all. I put about two tablespoons in there, but that's optional, okay? I'm going to put in a pinch of salt and about two teaspoons of vanilla. You do need to use about a tablespoon of lemon juice. That acidity is going to really pair well with the sweetness, 
I'm gonna put in half of a teaspoon of nutmeg as well as about a teaspoon and a half of cinnamon. I'm gonna put in three fourths of a cup of brown sugar. Of course, you have to gauge it, you know, to whatever you like. I'm gonna let this simmer for about four minutes and then just cut it off because you know the peaches are also gonna cook in the oven. I am using these biscuit thins today. We're not using all of them, okay? I'm, you only really need about 11 biscuit thins in order to do this. I, you can use any of the types that you want, the big ones, all the small ones, okay? But I let these just sit out and I let them defrost for about an hour. I'm then gonna put some flour out on my board and I'm going to flour my rolling pin as well. I am going to just roll them out until they're maybe doubled in size. Now I'm using the mini ones today, but you could also use the regular size. If you use the minis, then you'll need anywhere from 11 to 12. I ended up using 13 because honey, I had 13 left in my bag and I won't about to put two biscuits back up in that freezer, okay? They was gonna eat it today, okay? If you have the regular size, you can use about seven or eight of the regular size biscuits. Once you roll them out, just let a little flour stay on them so they don't begin to stick together and you can just place them at the side. I have my baking dish and I'm just gonna go in and swipe it with some butter. In total, I use one stick of butter in this recipe. I put about four tablespoons in the peaches and then I'm gonna take about four more tablespoons and use them later on. I'm gonna take my biscuits and I'm just going to lay them out. Y'all gonna see I got like 13 biscuits. See, I told y'all I won't gonna throw none of the biscuits away, but I'm telling you, you can do it with like 11 of them, all right? This gonna be biscuit all on the bottom, okay? So rub it in, you know, press it down. You know, get the corners, get all of it, all right? And then I'm just going to dump in all of my peaches mixture. And then I'm gonna fold over the sides, you know, just kind of tuck it a little bit, make it cute and I'm gonna use the biscuits I have left on top. Now the amount of sugar you put in this recipe is gonna depend on how sweet you like your peach cobbler. So in total, I'm using about one cup because I take three fourths a cup of brown sugar, I put it in the peaches, then I'm taking um, some butter, I'm putting on top of the biscuits and I'm gonna sprinkle on about a fourth of a cup of cinnamon sugar, okay? But if you like yours more sweet, then I would just add more sugar into the peaches mixture. You know, you just taste it, okay? I'm gonna brush all this butter on to help the sugar stick. And it's also going to keep those biscuits nice and moist. And it's going to give you a delicious crust. I did not end up adding any cornstarch into the syrup, like the cornstarch water mixture, because I feel like with all these biscuits, it really just soaks up a lot of juice. But if you want a really thick syrup, you can add in a teaspoon of cornstarch when you make your peaches. I'm gonna let this bake at 375 for about 30 to 35 minutes. It does need to cook the whole time, so cover up with foil if it gets too brown, because those biscuits at the bottom do need to cook well. This has a crunchy crust that really you could just eat these biscuits alone, okay? I told you this is for the biscuit lovers, all right? But let me know what desserts you're going to be doing Thanksgiving. I'm doing peach cobbler. I'm going to be doing some pound cakes, of course, soup and pie. Honey, let me know what you're getting into, okay? Do you like my budget Thanksgiving idea? I feel like a small family could really pull this off. As I said, I'm gonna link the potato salad, mac and cheese and greens in the description box. You guys know I love you, Jesus loves you, and God bless you for supporting this channel. I appreciate you guys so much. I'm gonna see you next time in Kamira's Kitchen. Goodbye, God bless.